This is the easiest, least messy, mouse-proof and waterproof feeder I've used. And I'm gonna show you how you can make one for yourself. Hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. So a lot of you have a wide variety of feed buckets and waterers that uh, you've realized, especially if you're new to chicken keeping, maybe they're not ideal or if they just cause you so, so much headache because you're constantly having to go out there and clean it, keep mice out of it, keep the chicken poop out of it, keep chickens out of it in general, and you're also tired of wasting extra food. I was tired of using you know, what most people have. You have your traditional hanging buckets, your hanging feeders. You also have buckets with port feeders on them. That is a great design, but it has its own flaws. There is a ton of waste associated with the port feeders, not any more than with a hanging feeder, but I always felt bad uh, for my rooster. Bryson always having to put his head with this massive comb inside of it. It also wasn't really mouse proof. Mice had a very easy time getting up and onto the ports. They could just jump and launch themselves onto the, the ports. And the problem with that is the mice could get inside the food and scurry around in there and contaminate the feed as they can with regular hanging feeders. And even though the ports came with plugs, I was never religious about putting them in at night or remembering to take them out first thing in the morning. So I was really looking for a design that would be a lot more hands off. I looked at those automatic treadle feeders where the food remains covered until the chicken steps on a plate and it raises the lid. Yeah, the more I thought about that one, uh, I felt I would end up with a decapitated chicken or two as I could see some of mine sticking their head in from the side as the chicken on the plate jumps off. Plus they're really expensive. Then I ventured into designing a system where the food is behind a door and the door opens in the morning and closes at night. Again, this was probably gonna be an expensive prospect. Plus I needed power available to do it. And there was no guarantee that the food wouldn't get wet depending upon where I had to install it. Then I decided to go with the version I have now. It really is waterproof and I've not had any issues with mice getting in. I have seen them launch themselves onto the top of the bucket, but they haven't been able to get down to the dowel and they definitely can't get in through the holes. Sure, they could jump up, tap this and get some feed out that way, but they can't actually get into it so they're not able to contaminate the feed. So I feel much better about that. Again, this is weatherproof and rodent proof. Uh, you do not have to buy this exact bucket, but I will put the link in the description if you want to get the exact same. They have some pretty cool colors, but like everything else, if you buy it online, these buckets are more expensive than what you'll buy at the store. They are food grade buckets. Not all buckets are food grade and food grade is more expensive than other plastics. But the cheapest and easiest to get are the ones that you get at Tractor Supply. Uh, the TSC branded buckets are, I think the TSC, I don't wanna quote you a price, but I think it's about $4, maybe $5 for a bucket. Don't forget to buy a lid because that doesn't come with the lid. Now the lid I have on this, which is also what made it a little more expensive, is it is a screw on bucket which makes it super easy to get on and off instead of trying to <laughs> pull off lids. But this is really what makes this bucket expensive. They do sell these at Tractor Supply, but I think in and of itself, the lids are about $12 a piece. So they're even more expensive than the bucket. Now, the next thing you wanna get is a stainless steel eye bolt. I went with a four inch length and a one inch diameter on the eye. Again, this depends on the feed that you're using and the size of the feed, whether you're using a pellet, mash, or crumble. If you are using a pellet, you're gonna want the eye to be as big as you can get it because those are bigger pieces that need to come out of the hole. If you're using a crumble like this, where it's very teeny tiny pieces, you don't need an eye bolt that big around. But if you're using a mash, again, these are whole grains, so they're probably not as big as a pellet, but they're still more sizable than the crumble. 
Again, I had to order mine online because these aren't very common at the big box stores. It'd be nice if it was, but no. You're gonna need some nuts and washers, or you could just use what I did um, and avoid the washers as I use lock nuts so that you're not having to have extra hardware that could potentially fall off. And you know what chickens do, they like to eat anything they can. It doesn't matter if it's metal, plastic. If it's smaller and they get it in their mouths, they're gonna eat it. One of the things I will highly recommend is that you go with stainless steel hardware just in case something does come off like the nuts or washers if you're using washers. Chickens are susceptible to hardware disease. Not that stainless can't be a problem, but if you use things that are coated with zinc, um, any, anything that's galvanized, you know, if that starts chipping off because they do rust, it does happen, they get flaky. So if that stuff starts to flake off and your chickens are eating it, there's potential for them to get hardware disease. They can get toxins in their bloodstream from the galvanization. So I highly recommend that if you're gonna do one thing, if you don't get a food grade bucket, at least make sure you're getting stainless steel hardware. Now for the holes, you can use a Forstner bit, a paddle bit, or a hole saw, and you can easily make one hole. I went with two just so that more chickens could get a peck in here and there, but you totally don't need to have two holes. In fact, if I would do it again, I might only do it with one. The key here is that you want the hole to be less than the diameter of the eye bolt. What size you make that hole, again, will depend on how big the particles of feed are. I even had an issue initially, I was using the mash, which is the whole grains. So my holes were a little bit bigger and then I decided to switch to a crumble. And when I switched to the crumble, the feed was just pouring out of the holes. So what I ended up doing was getting some stainless steel washers to put on the inside to close that gap up a little bit more so that the feed wasn't just spilling out every time they touched it. Actually, they didn't even have to peck it. The feed would just spill out if a breeze knocked it around a little bit. So do be mindful of the size of the hole. Start off small, you can always go bigger, but you can't go backwards. And if you do make a mistake and it is a little bit too big, just get yourself some stainless steel washers to close that gap. You're gonna want something that the chickens can peck on so that they hit it and the feed drops out. I chose to use wooden dowel. And if you're going to do that, if you go to the big box store and you buy yourself a rod like this, don't get it from the storage or shelving section because you're gonna end up probably spending twice as much on a clothes hanging rod than if you go to the section where they sell dowel rods. It's a lot cheaper and they're a lot sturdier. So I just happen to have a lot of inch and three quarter dowel around, so that's what I used for the things that they peck, but you can certainly go smaller than this. Now in retrospect, this is great. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But what the chickens like to do, because this is flat, is they will peck it and eat it off of the top of the dowel instead of eating it off of the ground. So what happens is they continue to peck at it so that they can eat it off the top and then there's twice as much on the ground. So the next time I would make these, and if you're going to make this from scratch for the first time, you might wanna either shave it down so that there's no ledge on the dowel for the food to sit on, it drops directly to the ground, or get yourself like a fishing bobber that's already made of wood, preferably one that's not painted or treated with anything, but it's just easy just to sand it down and make it more rounded instead of having a flat ledge. At one point when I first made this, I got some pumpkin colored milk paint, which is non-toxic, and I was gonna paint these red or pumpkin colored so that they could be attracted to it and use it right away. But honestly, they didn't need any help once they figured out that their food was in here, they pecked at it. You can get about 25 pounds of feed in each bucket. This is a five gallon bucket. And I've gotta say, I've been using this for over a year now, and compared to all the other feeders that I've used, this is the easiest and the least messy and mouse proof and waterproof feeder I've used, so I'll be sticking with this. 
and I hope you give it a try if you're looking for something a little bit easier than what you have now. If uh, you've tried this before and you love it or don't love it, let me know in the comments. I'd, I'd be interested to see why you do or don't love it. And uh, let me know if you try it and how you like it if you've not had one of these before. Again, thank you for hanging out with me on Tater Town. You know, part in my video. Is that what it was? I got it! Nailed it! <laughs> okay. I got it. Okay, let me finish, oh, please. Closer to the house, please. Closer to the house. I tell, I tell you what, I can never get anything done. What did I say? Did I say inch and three quarters? In, inch and a quarter. I thought I said inch and a quarter. What? Hardware disease doesn't hurt you if you eat it, so you can just uh, grin the chicken. Exactly. Or something. <laughs> okay.